Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Oh, wow. Refreshing. What a delight. And wonderful. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. Rachel, you know when someone else makes a mistake or they do something dumb, you kind of relish in their stupidity sometimes, just a little? <sighs> My good heart says... No, I don't know a what you're talking about, but a little bit of joy sometimes. When other people experience pain. <laughs> oh my gosh, it sounds so terrible. Well, the German call this Schadenfreuden. Schadenfreuden. That was a good effort. <laughs> I like that you whispered it in case you were kind of wrong. <laughs> I'm no expert. Some people call it karma, others call it justice, and we're calling it the topic of today's conversation with a financial twist, of course. But first, always, let's what talk are we, about what we're sipping on. Yeah, what are we sipping on, George? This is called an illegal cocktail. Okay, what I a fun name. I don't know why. Because if they serve it in a, anywhere, it's legal at that yeah, point. I don't do a lot of illegal things, but, but this if you want, fun. If you want more on this, stick around. We're going to give you the rating, reveal the cost per glass, and as always, recipes in the show notes. So stick around to the end. So George, me and you both host, me and you, you and I. Y'all, we all. We all uh, host the Ramsey Show, which is a Collins show. So we get people's questions slash problems. I mean, every and day. And it's just live. Yeah, you're just you're you know, you're getting hit with it, and it's like, all right, what do we think? Uh, what's the best way to guide these people? But we hear from some people that they love listening to the Ramsey Show just because it makes them feel better. Great example of the show about themselves. <laughs> yes, it's like, well, my life's not that bad. My life's not that. At bad. least I didn't do something that dumb with that many zeros on the that end. That was stupid. I would never do that. Yeah. Glad I'm smart. We right? can all relate. It's not the reason I listen to the show. I listen to hear Rachel's wisdom whenever I go back. <laughs> okay, but that's not the only reason people listen. Sometimes there's some great uplifting stories. Yeah. You know that happen. Inspiring, uh, motivating. Yeah, that's there too. You learn for something. Sure. Yeah, for sure. But I do think when you hear people's failures or mistakes, I do think that you can learn through that, that you don't have to make them personally. You can see something happening or hear something or what someone's going through and think, huh, I could make a different decision if I'm ever in that situation. If I ever see like the underwater car loan, that's like a hot stove. You hear that enough times, you go, maybe I shouldn't ever touch a hot stove. Yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe I shouldn't take on all that debt. Yeah, this is a theme and I'm going to learn from it. But, you know, uh, we hear that on the Ramsey Show, but where else you can hear that uh, is the internet. The internet is full of stories of people that have done not very smart things with their money. And again, not to relish in their pain and their problems to make us feel a little bit better about our lives. But there's some extreme ones out there. And whenever you need extreme content, you go to Reddit. That's where they hang out. I don't know why. It's the most honest place on the internet where people can anonymously share their Deepest, thought, darkest fears uh, yeah. and moments. And I think I've been on this site maybe three or four times in my whole life. Wow. So I don't live in there like you do, George. I don't live in there, <laughs> but it's a good place to get some honest takes. Because I can't trust the internet anymore when you think but about it. But you can it. trust Reddit? Well, I wouldn't say trust, but I feel like they have nothing to lose. <laughs> That's true. You know true. what I mean? It's all out there. Versus uh -huh. like a paid sponsored Google ad or something. Well, so. sure, sure. So yeah, you can get the, get the nitty gritty on Reddit. Let's take a look at what they said was their worst money mistakes, you know, for learning purposes. Okay. Not for fun or joy at all. Uh, this one's going to be, uh, you read this one. This is a grumpy kitten, 514. Are there that many grumpy kittens that they're the 514th <laughs> I account? I don't know. That's funny, though. All right, here's what he had to say. I joined the military at 22, and because I'm an adult now, I opened like five to eight credit cards and spent it like it was real money. It didn't help that I was an E3, and my entire work section was filled with E5, E6 sergeants, some of them even dual military married. So they had money. Mm. So I figured, I want to fit in. I got to act like them, be like them, spend like them. New tires and rims on my Camry, because why not? New computer stuff, any video game I wanted, jewelry for my girlfriend back home, plane tickets to fly her out, all in all, I racked up about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 in credit card debt. Oh, man. That's a money mistake. That's tough. And what's hard, and I'm sure a lot of people feel like this too, but it's, you know, he said he was an E3 with E5, E6 sergeants, meaning that like the pay is different, right? For, so he's on the lower end of that. And when you try to keep up with everybody around you, that's like the, that's the classic keeping up with the Joneses. Right, where you you may not even know what people make, but whatever they're spending and living on and you see their living lifestyle. like, you're going to try to match it regardless of whether you have the money or not. And so that credit Ouch. card debt racks up. 
and some old rims for the Camry too. The, it's the rims on the Camry for me. <laughs> and when he said that, I was like, is that what everyone's doing these days? Is that what's considered... Is that what they're doing? Cool. I know. But this is an easy thing to do when you're using other people's money and paying it back later. It's just sort of easy. You're hoping, you're thinking, well, I'll just pay it if I can make the monthly payment or I'll just pay the balance off in full. The problem is life hits you and you realize I can't afford all this crap that I bought. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's 22% interest on these cards. And so the easiest thing to do, if I could talk to Mr. Grumpy Kitten himself, <laughs> I would say only use your own money that you have now and make purchases based on your values and no one else's. Yes. And no, if there's people that you're surrounding yourself with that make more than you, clearly it's a known thing, right? Just know, okay, they're making more than me and, and I don't okay. have as much as them. So my lifestyle is probably not going to match what theirs is. Plus they said married and you know dual income, all of that. So I think dealing in reality and saying it out loud is so important, so yes. important. And when you spend on credit cards, we all know this, but just as a reminder, you will end up spending more. The spontaneous purchasing and the, you know, all of that in the moment goes way higher when you're spending other people's money, not your own. Yeah. So. And if you're wondering, between Rachel and I, we have zero credit cards collectively. Collectively together. And we like it that way. That's right. All right, let's look at a traditional donut, there 908. Oh. A little... Regular glazed Krispy Kreme. You know, just the old. Nothing wrong with that. Traditional. What'd they say? Uh, they said buying a house twice when I knew there was a strong chance that I wouldn't be there five years later. First one, I doubled down on stupid by taking money out of retirement accounts for the down payment. Ouch. Oh, man. Shoot. Okay. So, first rule of thumb mistake. Yes, you want to be in a home for at least five years. So you know you're going to be moving consistently like rents, right? Or if you're at a job, a travel nurse or something, and you know you're only going to be there for six months or a year, you rent. Do not go and buy a home unless you know that you're going to be there five years or more uh, just to get the full value out of it for yeah. it to go up. Well, it's in expensive value. to buy a home. You think about closing costs and moving expenses and your home may not appreciate in the short term. That's right. So you could be underwater and you're not going to ROI on this purchase. So definitely bad. And then taking money out of retirement. Yeah. Can we just talk about George, this? George, you, yes, you talk about it, George. Never, ever, ever for any reason, unless you are going to face bankruptcy or foreclosure, never touch your retirement accounts before you're of retirement age. Because number one, you have to pay taxes on all that money with penalties and fees. Yes. So you're talking about like you're basically borrowing at like 35% interest to do this. It's so much. And then you miss what the market's going to do when the money was in, right? So you've bought in and it's grown. And then when you take all that growth out, all that money out, then you're starting completely over and you miss so much on the investment you side. You unplug the money-making compound yep. growth machine. Oh, that hurts. That one's brutal. That one hurts. Whew. Yeah, and the same goes for not just withdrawals from your 401k, but also loans against your 401k. Yeah. People think, well, I'm Rachel, it's my money. I'm just borrowing it against my own. Listen, you're doing the same thing. You're unplugging the growth and paying interest on that money. Not worth it. Yes, and if you leave that job, you're in trouble. Oh, yeah, because they like want that money back. Yes, now. so not good, not good. Whew. Yeah, so just rent. Don't buy before you're ready. All right, speaking of taking money out of retirement, the next one is longer, but it's a thrill. It's oh, a real roller coaster. sit back and enjoy this so one. So get ready for some creative storytelling from username, no need for that, 99. <laughs> <laughs> Why the numbers? The numbers aren't really adding anything here. And I thought Reddit was supposed to be, well, I guess that is anonymous. I guess no need for that. We will never know who that is, but. <laughs> That's a fun one, at least. I think I would have an attitude screen name for Reddit. What would be your Reddit username? Stop. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Stop? Stop it. Stop uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh. uh nah. <laughs> Nuh-uh. No, you didn't. 47. <laughs> Got to add a number. All right. <clears throat> no need for that 99. Here's what they had to say. I had saved up $250 for a perm. Thank you for writing this in, Kelly. Appreciate that. I always wanted one. Oh, never mind. I'm a man with shoulder-length hair. Take that back. It's been difficult to save up for me, but I did it. Okay, so let me, let's just recap where we are so far. A man with shoulder-length hair saved up $250 for a perm, and it was difficult, but they did it. Got it? Are you tracking? <laughs> I'm sorry, I took Take a sip of my cocktail, and I could not swallow it, um, because no need for that, it's a guy. No need for that. <laughs> no need for that. 
Well, he yeah. needed a perm, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so I'm picturing like some Fabio looking oh, 100%, 100%. dude. 100%. 100%. Man with shoulder length hair saying, I want a perm. <laughs> Nay, I need a perm. 250 bucks later, gets the perm. I get to the hair salon and some old lady says she'll do my hair. Throws me highball prices and I refuse because I only saved up 250. <gasps> good. Finally, we make a deal for 300. Okay, good they for him. They negotiate. Good for him. An hour goes by and people start coming into the salon for the other hairdressers and everyone is amazed by who's at my station. Turns out she was old for a reason. Isn't age the only reason you're old? <laughs> Come to find out, she's a world-renowned hairdresser and wanted one more challenge in her life because she doesn't cut real hair anymore. <gasps> she then explained that the few customers she kept often pay in the $1,000 range. I had showed up there looking like a caveman coming out of COVID. When we were done, I looked fantastic. <laughs> Despite getting my near afro straightened, my hair was undamaged by the perm. Crazy. <laughs> then I somehow got convinced to buy hair products and a new hairbrush. I think I was overwhelmed. I feel like I had an out-of-body experience because I'm really strong-willed, and yet the total of all of this was $500. Long story short, never get your hair cut by a master hairdresser coming out of retirement. That was nuts, and I ended up taking money out of my RRSP so I could survive the rest of the month until my rent check. Oh, no. A lot no. going on here. Oh, my gosh. And RRSP is a Canadian registered retirement savings plan. So it's oh, basically they taking, should have caveated this was in Canada. I do have empathy for, um, no need for that, uh, because there is something when you're like at a salon or you've, I don't know, done anything in the beauty department, sometimes they'll throw, like you get a facial, then you go to the front, like, mm. oh, would they use this and this? And that? Like, like they, they will throw away a lot of products at you. And if you're not prepared emotionally and mentally and spiritually for that experience, you could be taken out. Like, it's so easy to be like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, You forget sure, part of their job sure. is to sell the products, and they get commission yes, off of each product they I sell. I know. So, yeah, we got to simmer that down, write down the products, go on Amazon, buy it somewhere else for cheaper probably. But, yeah, the, it's easy to get coerced into buying stuff when they're all, like, right there and just like, oh, here, here, here. So I have a level of empathy for him. yeah. I just really want to see this hair. Like, I'm desperate to see what this looks like because he said she nailed it. And I'm like, what does a nailed perm look like on a guy where I'm like, yes. Yeah, and then number two, robbing your retirement. Again, terrible, terrible move. You need time and compound growth. And uh, when you rob yourself of that, it's hurting you now and in the future. Yep, so don't get talked into spending money you don't have, people. All right, um, next up. Oh, wow, get ready for Jeff. Are you ready for this one? Jeff says, my trusted... I trusted my friend with $10,000 in cash to open a hemp farm. <laughs> Ninth red flag. Dude ended up taking no one's advice, started doing drugs regularly after discovering the Grateful Dead. Uh, correlation, <laughs> not causation. <laughs> wow. And going from a straight-laced fellow to a dude who lost all ambition due to being high all the time. Uh, I'm never going to see that money again. He just bought an expensive ring for his fiance, uh, has been taking trips to see people like widespread panic, etc., all while never paying me back. He wouldn't take anyone's advice, and instead, whenever he has a new idea, he's basically ripped off someone else. Wow. Ouch. Man, Jeff. Okay. So sorry. I, yeah, really, I is, should feel bad for Jeff, but I don't. I mean, starting a, a hemp farm. I feel like you know what you're getting into when you give your buddy 10K for the hemp farm. Yeah. You should know, I'm not going to see this it's money. It's probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to turn out well for me. Yeah, context yeah. clues, Jeff. Could have mm -hmm. helped here. Mm -hmm. So we say never mix money with friends or family because you will lose both. Yeah. You'll lose the money, you'll lose the friend and family. The transaction changes the relationship. But if Jeff wanted to give $10,000 to his friend to start the hemp farm and not expect any money in return, that's a different case, right? So the idea is if friends or family are asking for money or want money, give it to them. If you have it and if you feel like this is a healthy decision uh, without strings attached. So the idea that, yep, I will just give it and we don't expect it back, we don't want it back because immediately when you start lending money and expecting it back, you are judging You know most of the decisions that they're making. I mean, he's judging... Judging his old hemp farm oh, friend uh, through all of his decisions, because you're sitting there being like, "No, you, I, you owe me money, and here you are going on vacation, or here you are buying a new car, or whatever you're doing, 
But you still owe us money. Same thing happens when like parents lend their kids money for something, like a house, and the kids are on a vacation and they haven't paid the parents back and the parents are going, wow, looks like you guys had a nice vacation. It's just awkward. Well, that, or maybe the parents don't care, but the kids or the in-laws thinking, golly, we owe your parents money. We we need to pay them back. Like, like there's always going to be these emotions around it and it's just not worth it. Life's too short, people. Too short. And if you so. want to invest in a business, go for it. But the chances that your friend is going to be the one <laughs> with the idea that pays off an ROIs and gives you your money back five or tenfold... Yeah, you're fooling yourself. Probably, yeah. Sorry, Jeff Meister. Yeah. You know how else you can fool yourself, George? How? Thinking that your information on the internet is safe. I see what you're doing here. It is not safe out there. Don't be fooled. Do you know that your information from your home address, cell phone number, I mean, so much is out there and you don't even realize it. And until you start to see that there are spammers and scammers out there that are using it— and using your email address, everything, you're like, oh my gosh, I want this to stop. And the way to make it stop is to use Delete Me. This is a great service, you guys, that goes in and actually removes your data from data broker websites so that your information isn't being bought anywhere and oh, you can have a, a cleaner record on the internet, which it's is so amazing. Key. So you fill out your profile, here's the info. Yes, I lived here. Yes, I'm related to this person. And they will scrub the web, find all these places, fill out the correct forms to get it removed. And then they send you the report and how much time you saved. I'm up to 44 hours. I think Very I'm at proud. 38 was my last You're report. You're catching up. I know, it was so good. Y'all. Step it up, delete me. She can't beat me at this. Keep one going, more thing she's going. competitive with. So be sure to check them out. They're giving our Smart Money Happy Hour listeners 20% off any of the plans when you go to this website, joindeleteme.com slash smartmoney, or you can click the link in the description below. Well, Rachel, we are officially in cozy season. I love fall. We're heading into the holidays, and I think we could be a little cozier on Smart Money Happy Hour. You ready? Yeah. That's better. Whoa, George. Oh, my gracious. If you're listening at home, what you're not seeing is a mammoth-sized, oversized throw blanket from our friends at Cozy Earth. This is literally like a weighted blanket, but it is like the softest thing I've ever felt. It might be oh, made of real mammoth. We don't gosh, know. This is amazing. Thank you, Fall. Thank you, Fall. Golly. So, Rachel, we're heading into the holidays, and a lot of people are going to get some, some chuggy gifts, as they say. Yeah. You know, it's played out. You got the socks. You got with the gift card. The candle. But we can do better this year. We can. And you know what? Our friends at Cozy Earth have the most incredible products. I actually have their sheets. Yes, and they I've are, been using them too. It's like silk. My kids were like, what? What is this? What is this? When we got them because it's you. It's it's unbelievable. The My material, dogs did the same thing without <laughs> actually talking, but they love it. They love it. And then I got a pair of joggers, which I love. And then this blanket, I mean... Talk, think about a fire, think about a Christmas movie on. I mean, all of it in this, it's that, in. that's a better, that's a better life. Let's be honest. You know how there was like hot girl summer? I think cozy boy fall is <laughs> that's <laughs> more my speed. Yeah. So, guys, make sure to check out Cozy Earth because honestly, their products, the quality is unmatched. It is so, so good. And uh, we actually have a discount code for yes. our listeners, a great one. Up to 40% off when you use the code SMART MONEY. All one word, SMART MONEY. You'll get an exclusive discount for being a SMART MONEY happy hour listener and viewer. Go to cozyearth.com slash SMART MONEY and use the code SMART MONEY over there and you'll get that discount. So be sure to check them out. Here's what's really incredible they have a 10 year warranty on their betting. I've never seen that in my life. Oh, that's incredible. Absolutely. I've never kept anything for 10 years. So yeah. the fact that I can just get more sheets if something goes wrong. Because he has one top for George. Now, he may take advantage. It's amazing. And by the way, my wife, Whitney, has been sleeping in their little like, pajama situation. Yes. Changed her life. Just wonderful. To be fair, she was sleeping in like old like Ramsey t-shirts. <laughs> And I was like, it's time. She's upgraded big time. So thank you, Cozy Earth. And if you get a post-purchase survey, make sure you told them you heard it on this podcast. I love it. All right, George, should we uh, snap it out? I should snap it away. Okay, here we go. Ready to get uncozy? Yep. Man. Sorry. I'm like all cold now. It's about 62 degrees in here. (laughs) It is true. It is true. All right. Okay. We're back. Ready for the next one? Yep. Let's do it. This one's from... Cheeseburger with all threes and burger spelled B-R-G-R. Oh, special. How are we doing, America? <laughs> is it time for a check-in? Because this is where we're at. Is this like, our is life? life really that bad when we have time to come up with cheeseburger with threes and abbreviations? All right. This one's uh, one sentence. 
Cheeseburger said, I took out a $37,000 loan to bet on GameStop and lost. Oh, man. Okay, let's talk about this whole GameStop thing because I think it be, it ended up becoming this trend of people thinking, oh, I can short a stock on my app from my house and become a gazillionaire, right? I mean, it kind of became this false hope because it was real, right? That day, like genuinely, people made a ton of money off of it. But that's not the norm. Like that's not how this all works. So it's just frustrating to feel like people think, oh, there's a quick way to do this and to make a lot of money really quickly. And then they go and freaking take out $37,000. It's one thing now it hurt enough to spend $37,000 of my own money, but then to go into debt 37 grand, lose and still owe it. And still pay it back over time. Oh. With interest, yikes. Not good. And actually, wasn't Reddit one of the... It was, yeah, it was a bunch of people on Reddit that kind of came together. So you want to read the summary? Are you interested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> or right, here's the high level. So normally GameStop stock wasn't worth much. Obviously, it was kind of starting to go down. Not a lot of people going to a physical location to buy their games anymore. But one day, the price suddenly went up. And it's because of a bunch of Redditors who worked together to buy a lot of GameStop stock at once, making the price go up super fast. So kind of think supply and demand here. Then came the short squeeze, which is also what I call it when my wife hugs me. <laughs> so basically, some rich people bet that GameStop stock would go down. They shorted the stock, meaning they borrowed shares to sell, hoping to buy them back later for cheaper, and that way they'd make money off the difference. When the price of the stock went way up instead, they had to quickly buy more of the stock to avoid losing even more money, which made the price go up even higher. Mm -hmm. That's the short squeeze. So they read it, people. They bought GameStop stock early, made a lot of money, and the rich people who bet against GameStop lost a lot of money. So in summary, a bunch of people worked together to surprise some really rich investors and kind of screw them over. And it made the stock price of GameStop go really high, causing some to make money and others lose it. Mm -hmm. In comes in all the people who thought, I'm going to get rich off this too. Well, I'll you're a little in. late, buddy. Late to the it game. It already happened. It already happened, but people kept jumping in, trying to make yeah. it happen. And it's them. why I, I don't like investing in one company and a single stock. It's just too volatile. Obviously, this is a crazy example, but I don't own any single stocks. I only own mutual funds and index funds, which are giant groups of stocks. That's right. And investors pool together to buy those shares. Yeah, so when you think about buying a stock, you're buying a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of ownership within that publicly traded company. But instead of just focusing on that one company, hoping, gosh, that that's going to do well, if you spread out and buy a bunch of little stock from a bunch of bunch of companies all in one fund that's a mutual fund. So you're kind of spreading your money around, which again, is just lowering risk. It's probably not as exciting as like day trading and the Robinhood app and like all this stuff. But honestly, you're putting your money in, your hard-earned money that you've worked for, knowing that there is a guarantee that you're going to make money. The U.S. economy over time has gone up. That, that is the truth. And so um, putting your money in something that you for sure will make money on is what's key, and you're not, you know, yeah. gambling it is basically and what And never, that is. ever, ever go into debt to invest. That's right. Only use Counter. money you have and invest it wisely. Absolutely. All right, last one, George. You ready for this? Let's do it. Throwaway Snitch for Cash says, in 2020, I lost over $2,000 worth of crypto on OK. OKEX. OKEX. Because I had no stop loss on a margin trade. And get this, my... Beep, mouse's battery died. I couldn't get out of the trade manually <laughs> where I only would have lost around $500 instead. When, but when you're margin trading, time is of the essence. So I tried to close the trade with the keyboard, but there were so many beep options that I was sifting through the tab that I was losing even more money while I was trying to do that. Oh boy. I raced to another room in my house where I had to get a battery, go back to my PC, switch out the battery. But by the time I got my mouse working again, my position was wiped out automatically. I was taken out. Wow. Because of a mouse. I think the real lesson here is use a Mac. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Who's got a mouse? Yeah, um, uh, Macs have mouses, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. But I bet they last longer than this PC. You know what? Is. Just don't use a computer. Use your phone. Well, my guess is this this guy's a gamer. Or he's using it to crypto mine or something. Oh, he's okay. got like a pretty intense PC. A whole like setup. It's a whole yeah, there's a whole kind it's of a whole setup. All right, man. Well, I appreciate the confession because that that sucks. Let's be honest. Your battery runs out on your mouse and you end up losing all this money because of that. That's not fun. That's a great story. But also though. just know crypto, it's risky, you guys. It's not worth it. It's a gamble. 
Like if you have done everything with money wisely, you know, you're investing in retirement, you've paid off your debt, you have an emergency fund, and you got some extra money and you're like, hey, I want to go to Vegas and play craps or I want to buy crypto, right? If it's just throwaway money for you and you choose to do it, that's up to you. But do not use your hard-earned money thinking, oh, this is going to make me a lot. It is such a gamble. There are so many scams in a the crypto of world. Still happening. Still happening. Here's a stat. Hackers stole $400 million of crypto in the first three months of 2023. Ouch. And security experts celebrated that number because it's 70% less than what was stolen in the first three months of 2022. Oh, no. So it's like crime was down year over year and it's still insane. And we're like, still that's terrible. Still, still good. Progress. Still good. We're Yikes. going in the right direction. Yeah, crypto, you guys, not not worth it. Not worth it. But man, there were some lessons in there, George. I do feel better. I wouldn't say I derived <laughs> a lot of joy from any of those. Yeah. I mean, when people lose money, it's sad. You know? Sure, absolutely. I don't actually enjoy people's pain. Yeah. Um, unless it's just funny and like they recovered already. You mm-hmm. know, the more time that's passed since, you kind of feel better laughing about it. Sure. But sure. in the middle of it, you don't want to laugh at any of that. No, that's tough. So, that's and tough. there's no shame here. Like Hannah Montana says, I know you know, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. <laughs> it's the climb. It's just, just, just a climb. I don't know what to tell you. It's a climb. <laughs> um, let me share a mistake I make. Mm-hmm. I, I often care too much. <laughs> I work too hard. Jeez. I, sometimes I'm too nice to people. I get taken advantage of. Oh, George. You're just such Any a good person. Any mistakes you want to share today? Just such a good person. You've shared the uh, you got scammed by a fake USPS. By text. USPS, and I get I get DMs. I'm not kidding. Probably once or twice a day of people, and someone today texted me a picture of it, and they said we're calling it the Rachel. Oh like, wow! Thank you. We did have a text, text thread with a few of us, and we were sending whenever we got a scam text, yeah. we'd send it to you to be like, "Thanks, Rachel. I we're know. not falling for it. Thanks to you. Just doing the Lord's work. I walk so you all can run. That's yeah. what I like to say in the scamming world. Um, My yeah. wife will call. I don't answer. Scam probably. Scam, scam likely. <laughs> they can spoof names now. I know. It's intense. Yeah, that's probably been my, my most recent money mistake for sure. Was it was a good old scam. That's a good one. Not good. Not my good. most recent, buying vegetables from Trader Joe's that go badly too quickly. <gasps> Oh, no. A lot of money wasted. Yeah. When I have to throw away that food, I just feel bad. Yeah. Uh, there was like a crazy stat about how much food Americans throw away. I'm, not I'm an aspirational shopper when it comes to healthy foods. Oh, man. Okay. So I feel like a lot of the Reddit threads, it was kind of these like extreme situations, right? Like borrowing money to help a friend with a hemp farm to crypto. A lot of investment a, mistakes. To a perm. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's these things that are... Um, not quote unquote normal everyday things, right? So I think that's a good learning that when something is out of the ordinary, it's probably not going to line up with common sense, right? Like there's something that's like it is so out there, and the more out there it is, probably the more likely you are yeah. to lose money. If so it keeping, seems too good to be true. It is. So keeping common sense, you guys, at the forefront is so key. Yeah. And it's a superpower to have common sense these days. Yep. And so here's some examples: don't spend more than you make. And we laugh and go, ha ha, that's super simple. America wouldn't be in debt if we actually did that. Yes. Uh, make a plan for your money, aka do an every dollar budget every month. Take the income that you've worked so hard for and plan it out. Know where your money's going. And we can drop a link in the description or show notes to every dollar for you guys to check out for free. That's right. Uh, here's one. Don't try to keep up your lifestyle with people who make more than you or anyone for that matter. And this one's hard because you want to live up to the way they're living, whether it's your parents or your friends or your coworkers, and it always ends up with you being resentful and spending more than you make. That's right. Also, don't sacrifice long-term gain for short-term problems, meaning don't take money out of your investments that are going to help you long-term to fix something in the present, like figure out how to fix it now and let those continue to grow. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. And here's one that I love to say. If okay. you fall for the trends, you'll fall for the traps. Oh, that's a George so, quote. GameStop, shorting, crypto, the hemp farm investment. Just yeah. don't do it. Just be wise. Be wise, so you it feels guys. like an amazing opportunity that everyone is doing, maybe run far away. Well, I hope we all learned something in this episode. You know, I feel good. I feel like we Yeah, we've... I learned that I need to get more creative with my usernames. And your hair. And my hair. <laughs> Should I get a perm? <gasps> What would that Ooh, even that look like? That would be really interesting, George. You could have the like curly-haired look. 
you know? I don't know if that's coming back ever. Like <laughs> some trends come back around. I'm hoping. I think your haircut's Although, good. Although, have you met it. like like teenage boys these days? They all have the same hairstyle. Oh, I mean, it looks like a grandma's hair. It's like yeah. a joke because it does. It's like all just like curly up here and just a mess. Yeah. It's like the messier, the better. Do women like that? Wild, wild. Maybe the Gen Zers do. I don't know. Good for them. Good for them. Well, George, it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty Guilty as as charged. charged. Every week, our producer, Kelly, gives us a new guilty as charged question. She gives it to us every week, and if we're guilty, we take a sip. So, Kelly. All right. Have you ever gaslit yourself about a purchase you knew wasn't financially wise? And this question comes from Instagram user at Alberto Fidesz. Oh, Purchase you knew wasn't financially wise, and you still somehow kind of just like talked yourself into it. Okay, here I got I got around my neck actually right now. Oh, yeah. Here, here's a real time. Okay, so I normally just buy cheap jewelry on like Amazon, but I went to a actual website. It was actually the purchase I made that I got scammed on the USPS app. No, yeah, it's all the, full the circle. Text. It's all for circle. We're back. So these necklaces again, like just like little uh, layering necklaces. They were they were um, not terrible. I mean, maybe thirty forty dollars each, and I'm not I'm not used to that, y'all. I'm used to like fifteen dollar. So I Can't rushed and I got three. I got three in my, you know, order. And I will say, I got to the checkout. I was like, "Holy, is this is this silly? Like to spend a hundred bucks on three necklaces is a lot for me. Like it just didn't feel." Like I could have, I could have probably Georged it and like found. What does that mean? Just found like a cheaper version of it somewhere else, <laughs> oh. but I didn't. You mean like creative resource? And I just did it, yeah. And I just okay. bought it, and I just bought it, and I justified <laughs> it. Like Rachel, you work hard, Rachel. You, you deserve have the money, it. Rachel. It's in the budget. You know, you do all the justification. I gaslit myself and I just purchase it. I don't necessarily regret it, but I do think like, oh yeah, those were like nicer pieces of um, Yeah, the, the piece financially wise, because we both budget, we only use, you know, cash in our debit cards. Yeah. We're not going into debt for stuff, not trying to impress anyone. I was on the verge this week, actually. Mm. And I literally, everything was in the cart, had my card info in, and I had that gut check. And so I guess I ungassed myself. What was it on? Myself. What was the, what website? You're going to laugh at me. Oh, I can't wait. I, I was Spices? Look, I was going to order a complete skateboard. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what a complete, is that a, that's a brand? Like, well, no, no, complete just meaning like the actual board, the trucks, the wheels, you know, everything. How else do you buy skateboards? Well, just like the deck. You could just buy the piece of wood. So complete meaning the bearings, the wheels, the trucks, the grip Isn't tape. that how skateboard, if you buy a skateboard, don't you just buy a skateboard? If like, you're getting from scratch, yes. Okay. So okay. I piecemealed the skateboard. Oh, you like built one. Yes, I okay. basically built it on the website. How much is a skateboard? Wouldn't you like to know? I would. You didn't buy it. Tell They're going us. upwards of two hundred dollars. All right, I could have gotten six necklaces for that. Exactly. <laughs> so, I uh, we I discuss all purchases with my wife that are of uh, this caliber. Okay. And she said, "You have a skateboard." And I went, "Yeah, but it's like twenty years old." Do you skateboard a lot, George? Well, that was her next question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing: I actually went to the skate park the other day. Yeah. And it was me and about four 13-year-olds. <laughs> and I was the best one there. And I felt pretty good about myself. But I was winded within 20 minutes. Um, I was scared to try anything difficult because I, I was scared to get hurt. Yeah, I don't want to break a I hip. was wearing a helmet, but I still like, you know, broke an ankle, sprained wrist, whatever. Changes your life. It you, changes yeah. everything. Like, yeah. I got to go to work on Monday. These kids, what do they got? Yeah. You know? School. School. It's cool when you show up to school with a cast. So in my head, I was like, I'm not going to use it enough. I could probably just re-grip my old skateboard, meaning get new grip tape. Sure, sure. It'll feel newer. I can yeah. get better skate shoes, and it'll that'll be a better investment than spending 200 bucks on a skateboard. George, I'm proud of you. And I even found a promo code for 10% off. So <laughs> I, I, got it down, I got it down to like 176. Oh, yeah. But I still was like, I don't need to. I don't need to. Because what's going to happen is that new skateboard will sit in the garage, and every time Whitney sees it, it'll be like, remember that time you remember said? That? Remember that? Remember you that? You needed a new skateboard? Remember that? And I already have <laughs> about three skateboards. I have a longboard. Oh, man. I have a mini longboard. I have my normal skateboard. Wow. Mr. Athletic. What can I say? Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Your boy still got it. So, yeah, I, I unguessed okay. myself. That's good. That's good. That should have been the question. Have you ever talked yourself out of a purchase at the very last minute? Um, yeah. 
I was going to buy a bike because we were into biking as a family. Not like a nice road bike, but just like a regular bike. And then bikes are expensive, like a couple hundred bucks. Hundreds. And I was like, I don't need that. I'm just a mom. Whoa. I just need a- Just a mom. I'm just, like, I'm like, I just- I'm No just, one talks to my I'm friend just, Rachel like that. I'm just almost a 40-year-old woman who just needs to pedal. Like, that's all I need. I don't need anything crazy. And I went to the used bike store, uh, played against sports. Wow. And I bought a bike. <laughs> For like 60 bucks or something. It was They're perfect. They're that cheap? I've got to head over there. It was perfect. You know, wow. it's got a little, I mean, it's probably a good 10 years old, but it's fine. Yeah. Pump up the tires. Winston has a pump. Learn to. Is that how it goes? <laughs> uh-huh. He's still doing that move? Pump the tire. They yeah. have like fancier pumps now. No, no, not for the bicycle He's getting his pump. workout in. Okay. Or I'm getting my workout in. I pump my tire. I learned how to pump my tire. Oh, I got to witness that. that no, and something. my car tire. I did that too. I'm saving us money everywhere. It's so great to buy my necklaces. That's what she does. <laughs> That's why she's America's gas, sweetheart. Gas, gaslighting myself. That All was right. fun. Um, okay, we're pretty even, George. Yeah. This was the illegal cocktail, if you've been paying attention. I hope you have. And what is in it? I'll tell you after you give us your rating, Rachel. I'm going nine out of 10. Wow. I think I would order that at a restaurant. I'm going 10 out of 10. Okay. I could not improve on it, and I would order it. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's good. It's a little limey. Like, it, I, the aftertaste is a, has a tad more lime than I'd probably go for. It hits the back of the tongue, and it's like, bam, it I'm does. lime, I'm yeah. here. Get used to here it. Here I am. Here's we what's in you. it. The illegal cocktail includes mezcal, which is kind of that smoky it's tequila, mm-hmm. white rum, falernum, which is a sweet rum liqueur, luxardo, which is another liqueur, Lime juice, simple syrup, and egg white. Okay, that's complicated. Probably wouldn't make that one at home. That's a lot. And th- that's why I'd pay for it. Yeah. And but how the- much per class, though? $3.32, which mm-hmm. is not bad considering the complexity. And a lot of ingredients in it. That's yeah. fun. And uh, the egg white adds that nice sort of like foamy creaminess to it, which I like. Yeah, for sure. So big fan. The recipe's in the show notes. Give it a try this weekend if you're of age and uh, let us know what you think. Well, George, it's closing time. And if you guys like the juicy content of today's episode, make sure to watch or listen to our other episode where we actually spill the financial tea. I mean, we're talking feuds. We're talking drama, secrets, fraud, all of it. So if you're listening on podcasts, we will leave a link in the description. If you're watching, make sure to check it out. And make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss an all-new episode, which is coming out next Thursday of... Smart Money Happy Hour.